I am fast, again fascinated by the way the question I was asked, what tax proposals are off the table for you? Um, I, I don't know that I, I can answer that question and the budget cost just goes on, but I have been fairly uh, public and committed in my opposition to a proposed cigarette tax, um, although um, people come come to you with the, the merit of the idea of being something that will improve health and, and decrease smoking rates. Um, I think uh, that's not a direction to go. Um, I think it's a fairly regressive tax, and uh, we'll see if I can have my mind changed on that in the future. Um, gas taxes, I'm not supportive of those. One of the things that we tend to forget in Oklahoma, because we have a low cost of living in Oklahoma compared to other states, we, we tend to assume that we're a low tax state. We're actually not a low tax state, we're a mid tax state. Um, the, um, there's an 1889 institute gave us all a report last year that confirmed this. As an overall tax burden, Oklahoma's in the middle of the pack. We're not low on the spectrum. So that doesn't make us necessarily attractive um, to, to both residents who are living here and people who are considering relocation from high tax states. It's also the case um, that this year, WalletHub and one other international ranking, ranking organization placed us 25th in overall tax burden. And so the, the assumption that low cost of living correlates with low taxes is not, not a, um, it, it doesn't go hand in hand. And so we, we need to continue to look out for our tax payer, our tax base. And so increasing taxes is not something that is attractive to me right now. I don't think it'll be good for our state. I think our state is positioned to really blossom in the next decade. And I think if we were to increase taxes now, that would put a, that would put a damper on that blossoming that's expected to come. And that I'm hopeful will come. And so I think in terms of increasing revenue to the state, we're looking at increased business activity and increased taxpayers which is why, in terms of increasing revenue, I need to much rather advocate for the taxpayer by going down the route of eliminating exemptions and deductions rather than increasing rates for the, for the few people that are paying the taxes. <laughs> They're not a few people, but at least the people who aren't privy to exemptions and deductions. Um, so that's, that's where I'm um, looking to support um, proposals in the future. The budget process um, is introduced late in session. Oh, I shouldn't say that. The budget bills are introduced late in session through the JCAB process, the Joint Committee on Appropriations and Budget. Um, and so the proposals that have been before us so far have been, have been, have been good, but they, they haven't been real, real public. And so they've just been in the realm of discussion. So there's not bill numbers I can give you today, but um, I do, I'll bring up one thing that we've talked about. The itemized deduction in Oklahoma, that will bring in uh, $230 million, I think, is what we've talked about. That is something that will be a little bit hard. It only affects um, about a fifth of taxpayers in Oklahoma, a little less than a fifth. And so that is something that we can look at, um, especially as a funding source for teacher pay, and especially as a, a way to stabilize revenue and prepare in the future, um, in Oklahoma at least, to continue decreasing the rate, making us a low tax, attractive state as we're poised for some great growth in the next decade.